I never really played my music until I was about 22 or 23. I played it to a friend of mine and, and, and she said, this is really good. And she ran a record label. She was like, I'll, I'll put this out for you. Awesome. Well, I'm Adam. It's very nice to meet you. Hey, Adam. Lovely to meet you too. Um, and this is about you and uh, your journey in music. And we'll talk about the album. Amazing. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, so first off, just talk to me about where were you born and raised? Um, I was born and raised in London um, and have never left London. Um, and yeah, it's uh, the city. I live and breathe this city. You know, I've walked the pavements, the streets for uh, for a long time. So yeah. this is home. Um, and yeah, this is kind of, I've got, uh, my place here and my studio here. So I kind of work from here, but with this record, it was quite nice. Cause I got to, I got to go to Los Angeles to make this record. So, oh, um, wow. it was nice to get out of, um, oh, use smart activation to turn on. Oh, now it's gone. My Apple phone's <laughs> being unusual. Um, good. yeah, it, I got to make this record outside, take it out of London, which was nice, but yeah, born and raised Londoner, born and bred Londoner. Very cool. Was this the first, uh, album you've ever, or record you've ever done outside of London? Most of them you do there. Yeah. I mean, for like most of my, um, most of my career now it's always it's been mainly set in London um mm -hmm. just because that's where my home studio is sure. um but this for this new record I really wanted to get out of my comfort zone and kind of go and explore the world have an adventure mm -hmm. and see how that would um you know inspire new new creative ideas mm -hmm. did you go anywhere else aside from Los Angeles like we're Try other cities or that's i mean um, obviously la is a nice a nice spot yeah. to, to record an album actually, no it was just la because um i i wanted to work with rostam for the uh, well work with rostam for this album and he was based in la but i think i would have gone wherever he was based to work okay. with him you knew that you wanted to work with him yeah yeah okay um so I mean, he's done so many amazing records like vampire weekend and Carly Rae Jepsen, uh, and obviously the list yeah. goes on and on, but um, yeah. Yeah. I can see why you'd want to work with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, he's one of the best, well, for, in my eyes, he is, he is the best, you know, he's kind of, he works with the most interesting artists, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, he, he just so happens to be, um, yeah, based in, the city of angels which i loved i fell in love with it <laughs> yeah and uh, you do come from a quite a musical household correct i mean your dad was in a successful group um yeah what was that like growing up i mean uh, aside from your dad is then is everyone in your ha household musical or obviously you get <laughs> some from him <laughs> we're like uh yeah we're like one of those musical traveling families um <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to think of johnny cash's wife's name june uh, carter june carter the carter family yeah, yeah exactly um no it was it was just my dad um yeah it was it i mean it was kind of mad really my childhood mm -hmm. um because the band that he was in left field were a, a, were a dance rave band so it was yeah. like um you know the, the culture was quite hardcore and um seeing uh seeing that growing up was kind of exciting and also a bit like oh my gosh you know what is this um so as a result yeah I sort of had a quite an unusual um upbringing just being surrounded by loads of musicians loads of like my dad would take me on tour with him. So I'd be like sitting oh, wow. with the crew backstage and just like hanging out on a bass bin, just sort of like being looked after by one of the roadies. You know, I was kind of <laughs> yeah. very like, 
just stuck in and uh, very occasionally I'd actually even make it onto stage um oh. they would bring me on stage and I'd have these little pink tails and a left field sort of top and I'd be like this <laughs> mascot and I'd go like this I'd put my hands up and the whole audience would do that back to me you're like so, the hype woman like, I was the, like the flavor, the flavor, the flavor flavor. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. I was like flavor flavor. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I just really from the get go was sort of uh, like enamored by the world of music, and my dad would take me into the studio as well, and that was I found that just so exciting like what does all this equipment do you know I wasn't mm -hmm. like sort of just sat in the corner bored I was really like I was just so fascinated by it all so I, I think you know it's it's not it, it, it's not a coincidence that I've become a musician sure. um I think definitely the upbringing of just being around so much music definitely had an effect um and yeah, it was it was really incredible, incredible mm -hmm. to see. And it took, you know, it took us from living in a bedsit in in central London to, ha you know, my family affording a house and like, you know, just seeing like where music can how music can change your life, you know. Um, so, oh, yeah, that's was, interesting. So yeah. you, you kind of I mean, you were around when his career really started to obviously change I was as far as like success born, I was born when they were going from underground to mainstream so wow yeah I I really did see as a kid you know I was like yeah it was kind of amazing to see really and obviously that whole UK 90s dance scene like Chemical Brothers and Underworld mm -hmm. Orbital Left Field Massive Attack, Prodigy even, um, you know, they all went from like being relatively poor musicians to being really wealthy musicians. Right, really successful musicians. Really successful, yeah. And um, so, yeah, it was, it's, it was interesting to, to see that, you know, in fruition. And, um, you know, it's not all, look, it's not always the case, but... Um, you know, it was definitely quite like, oh, you can actually have a career in this, you know. Yeah, um, pretty inspiring, I'd imagine, to watch that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, really inspiring. And, and you know, it's. It, I think, though, as a kid, it, it all seemed rather mystical and magical. Little did I know how much work was actually going on behind the scenes, <laughs> you know. Right. Um, I think as a kid, I was like, wow, this just happened so quickly. But you know my dad and 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 his um ex business partner paul who who they they started leftfield you know they had like 6 years prior to that of just like you know yeah, gigging grinding right grinding exactly so it was quite it was quite interesting the fact that when i got signed um i sort of just thought oh this is going to happen overnight you know like my dad mm. And really it wasn't, that's not the case, you know? So it's also, it was a little bit of a double-edged sword. Like I saw this kind of, you know, thing take off. And um, and I think I sort of saw the romantic side of it. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, yeah I've, um, I've, I've, I've uh, had, I forgot, I think it was Anthony from the band Bayside. He was saying like, when they got signed, like it, it's like you just kind of move from, he was giving an example of like Thanksgiving, like you're at the kids table or like a holiday. Right. And then you move yeah. to the big, now you're at the big table and now it's like, and now what can you do? Like here, here, you, here's the kind of, you're at the beginning of the road now again, like, are you going to yeah. be able to succeed? But how, I mean, so many bands get shelved or they exactly. can't do anything. Right. Once they get there, like, just cause you sign the contract doesn't mean, you know, yeah the glitz and the glamour and the million dollar checks and everything else. It's just like, oh, here's your, now, yeah. yeah, I find it really interesting. Like I, I, something came up on my TikTok the other day, which was a uh, lady Gar. it was a lady Gaga interview. Mm -hmm. And she was saying like, I think it was like her second tour. 
um, or maybe her third tour with her first record, she was bankrupt. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's like wild. It's wild to think. And, you know, you, I, I guess like we are thrown constantly like the glitz and glamour of, of people's careers and like, this has happened overnight and look how big mm-hmm. they are blah, blah, blah. but you you don't necessarily hear the the fact that it's taken them quite a long time you know right like the war it. stories before that right well exactly <laughs> you know it's like it's yeah it's it's um it's interesting really interesting mm-hmm. it's cool that you actually were you know when when you were going to the studio and, and seeing what your dad was doing for for a career mm-hmm. and uh, that you act, that you were interested enough to be like, this is awesome. I want to do this because it could have went the other way, right? Like you, like you said, you weren't just bored sitting there. Uh, you could have been just bored sitting there. A hundred percent. Yeah, like, not wanting yeah. to do this, but you. It's awesome that you were inspired by it, and wanted to, to to to, you know, kind of pursue the same same yeah. career. It's really um, interesting that because I'm in the studio sometimes with, and then like my colleagues will bring their kids into the studio and they just they're just not interested in it at all they're just like right. dad give me the ipad you know it's like right. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny um obviously you're an amazing drummer as well was that the first instrument that you picked up i mean dad plays keys right he's a keyboardist yeah. in, in the group yeah dad yeah he he sort of plays a bit of everything really but yeah drums were the kind of uh, the first instrument that i kind of really took to like I just could sit behind them and it just made sense to me Mm -hmm. um and uh from a very early age you know I I I kind of um at school um there was like music rooms with with drum kits in them and various other things and I just sort of I would take myself away and and get into the music room try and play them and then um yeah it just kind of went from being oh I can do this to like oh now I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to drummers that I want to try and emulate or learn off and um kind of developed really um at the age of kind of 17 18 was when I'd start gigging as a drummer um but I never I never really I always sort of thought that maybe I should have done grades or I should have really stuck. I, you know, I, I sort of, the drums are such a, I mean, like any instrument, you can really um, throw yourself into it, you know? Mm-hmm. And, but I guess on the other hand, I always wanted to be a songwriter. So I was like, okay, maybe I can see the drums as like a way of earning a bit of money to to you know let me buy equipment to help further my songwriting career so I never saw myself really as a drummer you know oh, okay. I was just I, I saw it as a means to to sort of um get myself into certain music scenes in London but I I do often think like it'd be so cool to now go and like study drums you know like go to a music school and really get into it and um yeah, because a lot of the drummers I love are like, they're like, they're at a point in their career where they're sort of relearning the drums. It's quite an interesting point. Like, yeah. My friend Seb Rochford, who plays for Patti Smith and various oh, wow. other, yeah, he's he said to me, I saw him the other day and I was like, hey, Seb, you know, how's it all going? He's like, yeah, it's really good. I'm sort of relearning how to play drums and I was like this is a guy who's like got 40 years <laughs> so of successful. like yeah. absolute sort of like you know pioneering drum playing and he's like yeah I'm I'm going back to my kind of basics of paradiddles and da 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 and I just found that really interesting um so yeah but but it was always really songwriting that I was kind of interested in really when did you start that? I mean, I I did read that you went to like Brit School, which yeah, you know, produced obviously Amy Winehouse and uh, yeah. Adele, Leona Lewis, yeah. I think went there. But like, when yeah. did you go to the Brit School as a 
as a drummer or when you went there you kind of knew that you wanted to write songs like when did that start no yeah I actually went there on the basis of being a songwriter we had auditions and I I played guitar and I sang I think a Joni Mitchell song and I got in um, oh wow so not yeah. even as a drummer no no I mean you know it, it was it, it, yeah I just felt like I felt like I was that's what I wanted to work on really mm -hmm. the most um when I went there I was you could do composition and stuff like that and I was kind of a bit more interested in that than rather than playing drums for other people so um but I was really I was I was sort of <laughs> I was quite experimental in the Brit school. I don't know how much they sort of liked me because I was <laughs> a lot. A lot of kids were sort of, uh, you know, learning Adele songs and sort of stuff like that, and I would come along and be like playing Sonic Youth and like, you know, <laughs> a bit like being a bit of a rebel. And I was sort of tarnished a little bit as being the an anarchist, maybe a little bit, but. Um, no, I was, uh, yeah, I began kind of really working on songwriting around that time. And it would go from like, like, I remember my dad bought me a four track um, tape recorder. That's how I learned uh -huh. how to record music. So I had oh, four wow. channels. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't and learn. record a cassette tape, right? Exactly, exactly. Because okay. um, he, he was like, that's how I was, that's how I learned. I'm going to teach Georgia that way because and I'm really glad he did he did teach me it that way because it it laid a real foundation down you know for then going on to the computer or whatever but um yeah so I I would have four tracks um and in my bedroom I'd set I'd set this little you know rig up I'd have my microphone maybe also pointing at the guitar you know I'd mm -hmm. so I was already kind of experimenting in my bedroom of sound recording and, and writing songs um, at kind of 16, 17. And then I've developed this way, sort of, I had a drum kit set up in my room and um, I, would get, I would sort of um, sellotape the mic to the sort of hi-hat stand in a way that I could get a level from from the microphone to record the drum kit really shitly, but it kind of had its <laughs> own little thing, you know. Um, like I was quite into sort of Flying Lotus and that kind of hip-hop sort of experimental beat scene at a very, mm -hmm. like around sort of being 17. So I thought I was being really cool because it was like, you know, it's kind of like lo-fi beats or whatever. But yeah. it was really fun. It was fun, um, fun sort of experimenting. And I think they were real formative years, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of and then obviously like, from there, you know. Yeah. So from there, where, did you just continue songwriting? I mean, I know you've, you've played drums for a lot of people. Did that yeah. kind of take over or were you always writing songs and putting out music as as an artist? Kind of I was. I wasn't putting music that. out. No, I was all. I was just. I was too scared. I was too scared. Huh. I should have been, but um, I never really played my music until I was about twenty two or twenty three. I played it to a friend of mine, and 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 she said this is really good. And she ran a record label. She was like, "I'll, I'll put this out for you." Oh wow! Um, yeah, but 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 from my kind of like late teens to that point, I was. Um, I was just developing it myself in my bedroom, but yeah, and the the way I was earning money was was session drumming, um, mm -hmm. and it was quite cool because I started playing with my friends called Quest and um, Alan Tamara, and they Quest was sort of part of this really cool scene in London. It was um, part of the record label Young, um, mm -hmm. which was then formerly known as um, Young Turks. And Young was were signing some really cool artists, you know, the XX, mm -hmm. um, and they had like Jack and Yate, and like there was Adele was kind of hanging around that scene too. Sam for like the early days, um, and it was it was really cool because I got to sort of meet all of them lot through 
my drum playing. And then Quest um, introduced me to like Mika Levy and like Mika Chu and the Shapes. And so suddenly I found myself in like this quite cool, like London, London scene, you know, with like yeah. really talented musicians and really kind of lovely people who, you know, went on to sort of become really good friends of mine. And um, yeah, it kind of, it was, yeah, it was quite cool how the drum sort of took me to, to, to all these different sort of scenes really. And then I finally plucked up the courage to play my music to people and every, you know, certain people, it, it was like, this is really good G. Other people were like, yeah, it's cool, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm glad I played it to my friend, you know, cause I could yeah. still be in my bedroom. <laughs> Right. I mean, I'm sure way. obviously, yeah, they val gave you some validation on the fact that what you're doing was really cool. And like, yeah, sure, you are an amazing drummer and you could continue to do that as a session drummer or play with for an artist or whatever. Yeah. But it sounds like yeah. songwriting has been always been your passion. Um, was that the come in EP, the first one that you put out? Yeah, it was. That was the that was the music that I played my friend um cherish kaya who ran kaya kaya records still does um and yeah I, I played her those four songs and she was like i'd love to put this out and i was like oh my god okay this is happening um so yeah that the, that that was my first that prior to, i hadn't released any music prior to that mm -hmm. that was the first first music released yeah oh and then you put out your the next was it the next year that you did your first like the self-titled album yeah so off the back of that ep um i got signed to domino um wow. yeah and and i had the album ready um the debut record um so when i got signed it didn't take long to put out the record because it was already basically um and yeah Done. we put yeah, that out point. and yeah, yeah, put that out. God, it seems eight like ages ago, you know, that I put that <laughs> out. <laughs> um, and when yeah. like signing to Domino and getting then putting that out, I'm did that, uh, you know, like we said earlier, you kind of get moved to the table right now. You're at the table. Yeah, were you yeah. getting put on different tours or like, uh, did you do a lot to? I would imagine you'd have to get out and uh, support the record. And was that yeah, a new endeavor we for you? Yeah, it was quite daunting because I think when the record came, that record came out, it didn't quite do what we had hoped. Mm -hmm. You know, it was kind of um, it was well received critically. It got critical acclaim, but it just kind of yeah, it didn't it didn't reach certain things that we wanted it to. So it, there was a lot of like going on support tours and like driving around Spain, you know. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> shows all across the, you know, like really, like yeah, kind of grafting touring. Um, and by the time that record came out, I'd already had ideas for Seeking Thrills, um, wow. and a sort of I'd already met Mark Ralph, um, who ended up helping me sort of mix and and actually produce Seeking Thrills. Um, so yeah, it's all God. I haven't looked back actually in quite a long time, um, but I was quite like adamant. I wanted to start making the sec the 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 next record quite quickly. Mm -hmm. And I mean that one came out in twenty twenty, which there was a, a pandemic. If you weren't aware, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was that was tough. That was really tough. Everyone who released an album that year, I think, felt yeah, felt it. Um, we were just was lucky that like a enough. delay in that, or did you put it out before March? We actually put it out on in on on January. I think January oh. like the fifth. So I actually had about two months of touring. Um, That's good. So before before shutdown, so it did, but it did feel like a real um, spoiler. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> of course, Partly right. Super. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the person at the party that turns up and you just go, oh, shit. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, um, it, like after, I mean, obviously, 
it's great that you were able to support that um that mm -hmm. album and everything like when mm -hmm. you put out about work the dance floor was that like kind of where everything really it kind of exploded for you or was that a song that picked up later or i mean even was started out those are yeah yeah massive for you i know it was really started out uh, that broke me onto uk radio which um was really actually uh, an important aspect of the whole of that whole campaign um and then yes when about what the dance floor came was released it it really i think kind of spiked you know they people thought okay this this girl isn't just like it's not just a fluke that started out right. has, has gone on radio. you know this girl can write she's got something um and i think because that song has got quite nostalgic kind of references it kind of hit all age groups mm -hmm. um and i do feel like at that when i sort of without knowing it but that the year that Up about work came out was also the year that the weekend put um dun dun da 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 dun dun What's oh, is that, that uh, Blinding Lights? Blinding um, Lights. So yeah. there was a kind of like a bit of an 80s sort of revival going on. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I think it just kind of hit that whole kind of thing, really. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, yeah, it's... it's it's uh, Still, when I play it, you know, about what the dance floor, people still love about what the dance floor, mm -hmm. even though the title doesn't make sense. I was gonna ask you about that. <laughs> it's just like it's I get so embarrassed because it's like it just really doesn't make any sense. I remember when I, I first worked with Ross Dam and he was like, How did you title about work the dance for? And I was like, I don't know. They just allowed me to 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 name it that. And I just thought, why not? And so many times people corrected me on the radio. They were like, shouldn't it have been called, um, you know, da 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 da? Like, oh, it's funny. I, I, I still find it quite funny to this day. I thought it, I thought you were, I thought uh, uh, work the dance floor was something, like when I first saw it was something you were ref, like you were like, oh, about it, like, you know, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was your well, response to whatever right. work the dance floor was. Maybe right, it is. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and it was exactly. It's like, oh yeah, we're about to work the dance floor, you know. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, or like, oh, this is what it's. This is this is all about work the dance. Floor. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is me writing about work the dance floor. Um, yeah. So with this new, rec when did you come out to LA to work on uh, Euphoric? I, it's Euphoric. The song, the first one you put out is such a cool like. I, yeah. I love the vibe of the song. It's really good. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was. Um, well, basically, it was it was quite unusual because uh, so I was in L.A. Um, well, actually, maybe I should go. I should go back to the beginning. So um, in 2019, I wrote a song with Muramasa called Live Like We're Dancing. Mm -hmm. And um, after finishing that demo, um, Mur, uh, Alex's uh, friend Kosha, who's a, who's a close friend of um, Ross Dams, was in LA and played in the demo of Live Like We're Dancing, and it just so happened that Ross Dam got in contact with me. He sent me an, a, a DM on Instagram, just being like, "Hey, I hope you don't mind me reaching out, but you know, Kosha played me the 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 demo of live like we're dancing and i really love your voice and of course like i was like oh my god it's ross Dan, you know blah 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 this is amazing i've been such a fan of his um and so we kind of kept in contact and then in late 2019 i was in la playing my first showcase oh wow. um and i had a few days to spare and so i just messaged ross Dan. i was just like hey i'm in i'm in la i've got a few days can I come over and make some music and he was like yeah sure um and on that first day of meeting each other we hadn't you know we'd only been like speaking a bit online um we wrote everything you hear on it's euphoric that single is what we wrote in that day no way yeah wow. yeah even the vocals the vocals that you hear on that were that, on that day yeah, you recorded it that day from that day 
Oh my God. So it was just like, it was quite incredible. It was for both of us. We were like, wow, you know, this is, <laughs> this is, this works, you know? Um, and that was before even Seeking Thrills came out. So um, I, I left LA just being like, oh my gosh, I would, that would be such a cool direction to take for the new record if if I asked Rostam to do some new more music with me mm -hmm. um so yeah we just kept in communication everyone loved it's euphoric when I played them the demo and then from there on I I asked him I you know will you do the record with me please and then he was like yeah yeah that sounds like fun and then Fast forward two years, because obviously the pandemic hit. Um, yeah, and you just held on to It's Euphoric. It was, you knew it was, yeah. obviously it's a it's a smash and you yeah. wanted to work on an album with him. So you just saved it and, and we're like, okay, I'm just going to hold this until I can yeah. work with him again to finish. Exactly. Continue, I guess. It, would be exactly. Like. So I was like, that's really what got me through the lockdown, really. I felt very creative because I was like, I knew I was going to go make this new record with Ross Stam. Mm -hmm. uh, so then fast forward to the end of 2021, I I, I was in LA I, and um, I was living in Los Feliz, kind of Silver Lake area and mm -hmm. going in every day to work with Ross Stam for the next two months. So it was like, yeah, it was, it was, it was the adventure I'd, I'd hoped to have yeah uh, when you went back i mean you said you were really inspired and obviously feeling mm. creative and you were writing when you got back and mm. even into the pandemic like when you wrote it's euphoric with him did was it just did you have the idea or was it like you guys just kind of created mm. that song and then mm. going back to 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 finish the album or continue the album was mm. it like now you have a bunch of ideas to be like, okay, here we go. Was that like kind of the difference exactly. when you went back? Okay. Yeah, that was it. Like it's euphoric came from nothing. nothing. I hadn't prepared anything that just came from me and Ross down sitting in a room, me coming up with some piano chords and him going, da, 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 da. it was just like totally organic. The next time I found that I, I was there. Yeah. I'd, I'd come with a few ideas and just little kind of nuggets of, song ideas just so we could kind of yeah ha have something to to work you know on but but because we we knew it's euphoric and worked out so well we kind of I think there was like a trust and a mutual honesty and um a kind of excitement really mm -hmm. from the get-go because we knew we'd had such fun making it's euphoric so so yeah, I, I I made sure though that I had some ideas, but nothing was finished. You know, I wanted everything to sort of has have his input or input in, and also to have had sort of lyrics. I wanted to keep until I was in LA because I wanted the lyrics to be affected by my sort of surroundings in LA. Oh, okay. So you didn't have all the lyrics done. It was just. Bits no. and pieces and ideas exactly okay. just like little things like melodies that would kind of be like um da, da, you never know you know like sort of melodies that had some little kind of lyrical content yeah, them, yeah. not written you know um yeah and then we we both wrote them well and i wrote most of them in in la wow and I love the the artwork for the album is amazing. The the vinyl oh, is you. really cool. I saw an Instagram video of you like signing a bunch of stuff. Does that yeah. on that first pressing? Is it all you did? Are you autographing selective stuff? Like what does that look like? I'm just curious for your list. Yeah, or your we friendly actually, fans. So with the with the first, uh, I think 500 pressings or whatever. It comes with. Um, a polaroid of okay. the album artwork so i was signing those so you yeah, get like yeah. a signed polaroid which is That's quite cool. cool yeah we put a lot of work into the artwork um i collaborated with um a, a really talented uh designer called phil lee who did who worked at excel 
records for ages and did a lot of the kind of classic kind of 2000s XL records. Um, and actually he had, he designed the first EP that I ever did, which was just the Georgia in black with the white surrounding. So oh, it was kind of like the, it was, the photo of you in the first one. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. I was going to say it looks similar to, I was going to yeah. even mention that yeah. it looks kind of similar, yeah. but obviously so, years prior. Yeah. So um, when it came to, he just suddenly had this, he, he listened to the music. He was like, gosh, this is like a Technicolor record. And then we kind of went from there. We were like, wow, it'd be cool if I was just like surrounded in aura colors. And the album feels very like that. Do you know what I mean? And um, I always yeah, it's like uplifting face. and just like the song. I mean, the song title uh, yeah. and the lyrical yeah. content to the music makes so much sense. It's just like. Yeah, yeah, like you're in this like la, like it's just yeah. like this uplifting vibe. Exactly, and I I really wanted the art, you know, we wanted the artwork to 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 match the music. So, yeah, it was it was great to work with him, and uh, I'm so happy. Like actually, a few days ago, I went mm -hmm. to my record label and I actually held a physical copy. And, oh wow! Um, and it, it was just so incredible to like get to this point in time, like fast fast forward like three years, and you're like, it's in my hands. You're you know? holding and it, right? I'm yeah. holding it, and um, <laughs> it's really cool because also the 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 sleeve is like this metallic color. Oh really? So it's like it's really cool. It's almost like a mirror with these colors and then my face on it. It's really I'm not just saying that because it's my album. The artwork is really it's quite cool. It's a bit like that XX coexist album when they had the mirror. Uh, oh, not yeah, coexist, yeah, so no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, um, so it's got that but it's but it's colored met met metallic, metallic so coloring. Yeah, it's wicked. It's really cool. Really cool. And the cool. vinyl's pink too, which is cool. Yeah, the vinyl's pink. I know I yeah. chose that pink color because that was the color that I sort of, that kind of golden hour of LA where it's yeah. kind of like pinky, orangey, like, I don't know. It just, it, it feels like, feels like melted marshmallow or something like that you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean <laughs> yeah it kind of gives me even the pink is like you have that pink cloud feeling you're like oh this is yeah. like everything's great like this is yeah, yeah. I don't know and it kind of even it goes along is the the album in like in full is it pretty um not I don't want to say it sounds like like similar but is it pretty uplifting mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the whole album okay yeah, it really is. Like Rostam and I were both in a state of like, we we need to write an uplifting, optimistic record, you know, because yeah. it felt like you could have quite easily come out of that pandemic and written like really intense, like sad That's what music. I was thinking, really sad stuff. And you kind of yeah, went the opposite yeah. direction. Yeah, and you know, some artists did. They kind of, it was their introspective hour. But for me, yeah, I don't know. The elements of dance music I love are always the kind of, optimistic meanings behind the rec behind the lyrics and the sort of um yeah uplifting textures in the music and I th both of us were very adamant of that like you know um people got to listen to this record and just feel you know uh, feel good <laughs> feel good exactly yeah. exactly yeah well it's a, I, I love what you're doing thus far um and I think oh, I want you. I'm going to have to pre-order that vinyl. I was looking at it earlier. Yeah. <laughs> vinyl. Honestly, I'm not just saying that it is because it, it, it's my record. It is like genuinely I was like, wow, this is this is fucking cool. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then you got so, shows coming up in no, in the end of fall and end of, uh, yeah, summer. Yeah. Or, I mean, winter, I guess. Yeah, I do. I have some I have some shows coming up and we're kind of like you know, building it up, building it up to hopefully then next year doing like full on, full on tours. Um, so yeah, but I'll be, I'll be coming to America, which I'm really happy about. Oh, you are? Okay. I was going to ask. Yeah, you because this album, I really want to, I don't know. I just really want to tour America. I love America. Um, I loved my time there and, um, 
yeah, just the people and everyone. Because we went from California to actually upstate New York with mixing the record with Dave Fridman. So it was like we went from like sunny California to completely snowy, contrasting, yeah. you know, uh, New like, York City. Oh, yeah, exactly. Or like you know, no, we were in Buffalo, so we were like near oh, Niagara in Nor- Falls. Yeah, wow, so, like upstate, wow, well, like yeah. upstate, exactly. So it was like completely contrasting weathers and Ross Sam and I spent two weeks there mixing with De- in, at Dave's studio so it was just like I got to try I got my mini adventure with this record and um <laughs> hopefully with touring it can do the same you know take me on an adventure I hope you I'm I recently moved a couple of years ago moved to Nashville Tennessee but I'm from oh, San cool. Diego so uh uh I Maybe you'll come through the oh, south. Like, That'd be great. I really <laughs> hope so. I mean, I, I'm, I've, I've always wanted to go to Nashville. Obviously, being a musician, it's the uh, epicenter, isn't it? So a bit, yeah, big songwriter yeah. community here. Big Johnny Cash, as you brought up earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, gosh, everyone, you know. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely a goal to end up in Nashville. That'd be yeah. cool to see you here. Hopefully the tour will make its route to the South, but um, yeah, awesome. <laughs> I appreciate your time, Georgia. Thank you so much for doing this. I, this has been such yeah, a fun no, conversation. Thank you. It's you. Been, no, it's so it's, it's just great getting to meet people like yourselves. And like, I just, I love this bit of the, of the sort of whole campaign. It's like people are hearing it and ask, you know, intrigued and it's cool. It's really cool. Really exciting. I have one more question, but I actually really want to ask you something uh, that I saw that you, because you're on the Gorillas record. Yeah, yeah. Like I am. Yeah. Do, you did you drum on the record or like um because you're credited yeah. as a drummer, right? Yeah. So like that, I'm a huge uh, huge Gorillas fan. I'm I'm not sure. I would imagine you probably are, and Blur and yeah. everything else that Damon Albert's done. Yeah. Like, what was that like being asked to do that? Oh, it was amazing. It was like definitely um definitely like pinch myself career Peter moment. Hook was on it too right did you yeah the- and getting to getting to know Peter getting to know Hooky was like you know I was just like fuck I'm sitting next to Peter Hook like this is <laughs> right. a legend you know yeah, it's like, right. and my dad my dad was the biggest Joy Division fan like huge oh, sure. like without Joy Division so Joy Division was like played in the household for like since I was a kid so it was like I was really I was actually genuinely starstruck when I saw when I met Peter um oh it's amazing it's just amazing to get to see the whole kind of gorillas operation and Damon kind of his talent in that in that sort of project it's incredible and um yeah it was it was like it's great because once once you've done something with gorillas you're always part of the family and they That's very cool. much see that as your it's a family thing. So I feel very grateful to have been welcomed into that family. Yeah. Pretty soon you'll have an avatar of yourself. Well, George, again, thank you so much. My last question for you is if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Wow. Yeah, I th- it's a hard question to answer, but um just believe in yourself, you know, and I, I think listening to your to your gut, you know, and to your intuition, if something doesn't feel right, um, you know, don't, you know, just just follow, follow your interest. If something feels good, go with it. If something, you know, is like somebody saying stuff that you don't quite agree with and, you know, you don't have to agree with them. I think just believing in your in your own lane, I think, is 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 important. Bring it back, bring it back.